Hi, today we are going to look at mod sort. Uh, so we looked at the previous lectures, we looked at insertion, insert, insertion sort and the naive selection sort algorithms, sorting algorithms. In the next two lectures we are going to look at merge sort and then go on and look at quick sort. Okay, so let's look at this. So what is merge sort? The basic idea is now these we we go into for both these both the merge sort and the quick sort are recursive algorithms and the basic idea is that if for merge sort is that you divide an array into two halves and then you recursively solve sort these two arrays and then merge them right the idea is okay let's you know let's take this left array then you divide this into let's this let's take this big array then you divide this into two then take the left array divide that into two and then go on till you reach the base case where there are only two elements and then you sort them and then you sort these two and then you merge these four then these are also merged uh, these are also sorted then you kind of merge this four these four with these four elements and so on and so forth so, forth. so that's the idea Okay, so we, we looked at, you know, we looked at the idea. So it's, th these two are sorted and then eventually they will all be merged. So let's look at, so let's look at the merge operation first, right? So we're looking at, we're going to look at sort and merge. So the merge operation, what we're going to do is, right, you know, so we, in this, in the merge sort algorithm, typically you need uh, an, an, an extra array. Okay, so just right now, just imagine, that you are going to have another array for which will help you to merge these two arrays and we'll take a look as to why that is needed and can we and it's actually hard to do without that additional array it's, like, it's pretty it gets pretty tricky and we'll see why so let's say this is your so you know let's say there's an auxiliary let's say your initial array is a and your auxiliary array you copy all elements of a to the auxiliary array and now what you're now trying to do is for you you kind of start with the array or you look at the auxiliary array and you have these couple of pointers and what you're basically doing is you're starting with with the left side of the array and the right side of the array and if the left is smaller than the right then you basically keep on copying till you find an element which is actually greater than the right. In this case, you move this guy here and then you again do the same and so on and so forth. And once you are finished with one, with one part of the array, then you just kind of copy the other part of the array in this particular thing. Okay, so that's the basic idea of merging. Assertions are basically statements that will help us to figure to may ensure that if thing if then if the assertion is not met then it throws an exception and the idea is you can write debug assertion so that when you actually compile your retail version of the program or the program that you want to ship it's not part of that so there is no run there is no runtime cost to it but the debug builds helps uh, the debug versions have the assertions and it helps to ensure that your code doesn't have have any bugs in it so we, we we spoke about the merge and we also looked at the sort so I'm not going to talk about that okay something you know, how that thing works okay so this is the most important thing the merge sort algorithm is an n login al algorithm versus an insertion sort which is order n squared so we have already looked as to you know why the insertion you know how y n squared does not scale well and in hence you know you can just take a look at some numbers your home computer if you want to run a billion uh, if you want to you know run something with a billion nodes an insertion sort will take and you know like 317 years versus here it will take 18 minutes so i i, I think we don't even want, we don't even want to it's obvious what we, which one we want to choose okay now quickly let's go over the mathematical analysis of merge sort. How does it come to n log n? And the idea is very simple. The cost of sorting n algorithms is the cost of sorting n by 2 plus n by 2 because you're going to divide them into half 
and then n for the merge correct because you have to scan all the elements when you are merging them now the idea is you you are like you know and, and then what, what you are now trying to do is you are going to let's just assume for now that n is a power of 2 just for the sake of simplicity and the idea here is that the n by 2 again get split into n by 4 etc so on and so forth till you reach the base case that is d2 that you know how to sort and how many l how many levels are there in this particular tree there are log n levels correct because the number of leaves here are n by 2 leaves and you know that you know you basically it's 2 raised to log n is n so that's the idea here you did a log n levels so the cost that comes out of all of these you know so if you add the n so there is this n at the end correct this is n at the end and this cost at the base case is just 1 which is constant so n and how many times are you going to n, add n for each of them you are going to add log n times hence the cost is n log n make sense okay so that's pretty much it uh, you know we spoke about that and okay some more you know some more things um memory so we chatted about it that ideally you just need an extra uh, so you know you need an extra space proportional to n okay so you just the way i think of, about it is that you should you should just have whatever the size of the array b you can you may actually just start with another another array of the same size and you know that should do it and then you can kind of just use continuously use that array okay that's pretty much that because eventually you will need an array uh, with the which has the entire which is size of n so to do the final merge so you can just might as well have that at the start and pass it around so that's kind of a nice thing um okay so it's typically a sorting algorithm is called in place if it uses less than a constant log n extra memory and you know we we know that insertion sort selection sort these are all in place sorting algorithms they do not need extra memory uh, there is actually uh, okay so let let's briefly talk about that let's see if there is a slide here okay okay Uh, so I, I want to just talk about this in place merge. So it may as you, you may think that it's actually very easy to do in place merge. Why do you need an e extra array? I would suggest I actually did this exercise myself. Just try to uh, you know do try to do it in place and see how easy or difficult it is. What you will realize is the naive way that you would try to do an in place merge, you will end up with an unstable part of the array. What that means is that if you have you know where let's say these two are sorted and now you're trying to get this guy in sorted while merging what you will realize is that you will end up with the with one half of the array which is now unsorted okay so you started with two sorted parts you will have one part that is sorted and merged so it's kind of semi merged and completely sorted but the other part will be completely unsorted and then you what it means is you have to again do the uh, sorting on that side of the array so it's actually pretty tricky to do an in place merge and it's you know if somebody is interested there is actually you know there are, you know there there there's some research papers that talks about it nobody really does that because people use quick sort some more optimizations that we can use Uh, for uh, tiny sub arrays use insert insertion sort and typically it's less than 7 and this is code for that uh um if it is already sort sorted stop and you know you can you can you, I mean, you should think about it how I will, how can you do that and elim you know eliminate the copy to the auxiliary array by switching the role of the input and the auxiliary array in each recursive call so think about that as well and how you how does merge sort run this is a visualization of that right you start with the first sub array second sub array you sort these two then you merge then you take the next one and you know you sort these these parts then you this you merge and then you kind of do this so you kind of have finished this left and then you are going to do the right and then you will merge okay bottom up merge sort is a, the the basic idea is you pass to the array merging elements of size one Okay, so, okay, so, okay, 
it's a thing you know I am, I'm going to skip that but uh, I think you will be able to figure that out okay so that's bottom up merge sort um, sorting complexity uh, so you know we, we we spoke about that and log in in this case okay so the I think here there is one important point that professor is trying to make that the best sorting algorithm will use n log n okay so that's the only that's the idea that's actually a very neat idea that he's trying to make in that case what it means is he's trying to find a very good lower bound okay and if you know that your lower bound is n log n and since we know that merge sort is n log n you know that's the best possible sorting algorithm so that's the idea and the way he and the way you can reason that out is think of a dis decision tree for three items, and think of you know, what are the decisions that you have to make. And turns out for the three factorial leaves, what is the height of the tree that you need to do, and you know, that's how you can figure out its n log n. Okay. Uh, so the what 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 so the idea is you need uh, you need n factorial leaves. And for n factorial leaves, you need log of n factorial to be the uh, number of comparisons that you'll end up making. And there's some particular, I, I forget the name of the guy who actually did this, that the proposed in the idea is that log n factorial is, is approximately equal to n log n. And that's the idea. Okay, so I hope you I hope everybody got it that you know in this once again to to repeat myself, n factorial is the number of leaves that you know, which basically means is that these are the possible sorting combinations that can occur and for and the height of the tree is the worst case number of compares okay so those those, those are those, that's the important point and um, yeah so that's you know so and here's you know so the proof in detail that worst case is h you know binarity of h has at most two h leaves and n factorial ordering is at least uh, n factorial leaves and you we want to do log n uh, you know log we we kind of know why we want to put log and then hence a log n factorial is n log n okay so once again no more like two h leaves once again you know, this is h and two raised to h is something like that okay so two raised to h and h is h is basically this log of n factorial right because leaves are n factorial so it's it's just very similar to what we had looked before Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, you know we okay. So it's Stirling's formula. Okay, I forgot. Okay. So this is the guy who actually did that. Okay, so optimal algorithm, mode sort. Okay, so it's optimal in terms of number of compares. It's not optimal with respect to space usage because it uses order of n. Uh, partially ordered arrays, mm, duplicate keys. Okay, so what about this? Okay, so let's look at this. Comparators. Okay, so this is just some more Java thing as to you know how can you do sorting by various uh, different kinds of properties. I'm not too worried about that. Um, okay, so some code. So let's skip that. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. Uh, okay, so no, 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 no. okay, so this is okay. I want to make one point. Stability. So I think this point about stability is important. That when you sort by a particular column if you try to sort by another column the previous sorting should be sustained what that means is that in this case when let's say column a column one is already sorted when you try to sort by column two you should still maintain column a sort correct does that make sense in this case as you can see you know the sorting for column a is broken because although you have sorted by column two you know this particular you know for the for column two is equal to value three as you can see these three these values are not in sorted order right and those should be first then chen uh a n you know and so on and so forth uh so stable sort preserves this so this is kind of important and turns out insertion sort and merge sort are stable but selection and cell sorts are not and uh, you, you can think about it the basic idea is that the moment you try to make moves across large uh, you know distances they are no longer stable so that's you know, that's why uh, you know select selection sort is not stable okay so think about what you did for select insertion sort right versus selection selection sort and you'll figure out why that is the case okay. 
um, insertion sort okay so he just talks about insertion sorts that what are you doing here uh, versus so on and so forth and set again okay okay so this is the basic idea long distance exchange might move an item past some equal item Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thanks.